lately there's been a lot of videos talking about a very specific product and uh, I don't necessarily agree with all the things that are out there. So we're going to dive in on the Zis Brine Hatchery. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today I've had enough time to play around with the Zis Brine Hatchery that I want to give it a review. And I know a lot of videos have been coming out about this product lately. Uh, co-op has done it, a lot of like co-op, um, I, I guess, brand ambassadors. I'm not sure what they call them anymore because I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, they've been getting them and reviewing them. I want to take my take on it as somebody who does hatch brine pretty regularly and uh, has tried a couple different brine hatcheries in the past. So let's dive in on this guy. I'm sure you folks are probably tired of seeing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what's in the box, uh, the pros, the cons, and whether or not I actually like this thing. So first off, what's in the box? Packaging. Lots of packaging. Stuff in plastic. Here's the holder. We'll talk about this thing in a little bit and why it sucks. <laughs> I guess I gave that one away, right? But also included beyond the blender, you get a little hard piece of airline tubing if you get this through aquarium co-op. Um, there's a good reason for this. There's the actual blender bit itself, which... I, I think they went a little too hard on the, the blender concept. You have the lid. It's uh, It's got three different holes, one designed. It's just like... You've got this for pouring stuff through and letting air vent out. You've got the airline hole and then up here is room to put a thermometer and in theory if you needed it you could put a heater through this. We'll talk about why both of these just don't matter and this is the only one you care about. And then finally get this little uh, accoutrement pack if you will. There's a thermometer, a little pipette which I actually like the inclusion of the pipette. One of the Zis air stones which I both appreciate and think is unnecessary at the same time. You've got a little uh, bleed valve, or not bleed valve, but a tuning valve for airflow. And finally, you've got the stopper that goes in the bottom so that you can control or completely stop the flow coming out of the outlet of the bottom of the blender. So let's grab my used blender and start talking about the pros and the cons on this thing. There we go. Here's old trusty. Uh, you can see it's like a little cloudy and not super clean. Obviously, I've been using this thing and it's between batches. I don't really super clean this thing between batches. I just lightly rinse it out. You can see I've only got the airline tubing and uh, the the lid. And then, of course, the in the bottom, you can see the little stopper. Cut that out. Cut that out. Let's first start with this thing. This... I guess set the blender down. If you look at the side of this, and I'm going to put my hand through, I cannot get my hand, even as a fist easily into this area. Now, I don't have super big hands. I'm going to put this out there. Uh, you know, there are plenty of people with much larger hands than me. This thing is horridly designed. Unless you've got like, I mean like little kid hands. You're not getting your hands in here to open the valve. And it's also not very tall off the ground. So you're not going to really drain this very well. It works good to just hold it. But when you have the blender full... Because of the way this is designed, it seals pretty well with friction. So getting this and the blender separated is tough. Which is why if you watch a lot of videos, there's all sorts of people hanging it by the handle. They've made either a wood or PVC holder for it. It's because this thing sucks. And were I to look at a different version of this, it would be helpful. But I think you'd have to change the packaging in order to fit it. And that's probably an issue as the packaging is kind of just right for making the shipping simple right now. So with the blender itself, it, it's literally just square blender comes down. Here's your valve. You open it up to let stuff through. I'm not going to show you guys how to make brine shrimp. Every other video is doing that. You know, and if you don't know, you know, you can look a video up. Let's talk about the pros of this thing. One, the type of plastic being used, and you can hear me thumping on it. This is a good rigid plastic, but not too rigid to where if you drop it, it's going to shatter. It is durable. Do I think it is worth the price? No. I think this thing's way more expensive than it should be. I've bought two hatcheries, which you've seen them in the past, 
that are a cylinder made of a very similar plastic. The difference is minimal between the two. The only difference is the size and shape. And the two of those, which hold roughly the same amount of water as this does, were $15 on eBay with like five bucks to ship them. They were cheap. So I have to assume it has to do with the process of making the mold and a few of the other things that make this more expensive. Do I think this is so expensive it's not worth buying? No. I actually think it's worth it. I just think it's a little more expensive than it should be. I think that there is room to make this thing cheaper, but I'm not a retailer. I'm just a hobbyist who's messing around with this dumb thing. Uh, the good news. With this particular design, you have air coming in through the top. Because of how this sits, it allows you to always use this to pour your brine shrimp out. You can control the flow rate, which is nice. But there's a little problem with air coming through the top. And let me explain. Remember this little piece of hard airline tubing that Aquarium Co-op includes? If you bought yours through Aquarium Co-op, you can buy them elsewhere. And I don't think they include this every time. But if they do, it's just an upgrade based on that advice. This helps to make sure that you have a good strong line and you really don't need that included air stone. However, it doesn't reach all the way to the center because in the lid, we're offset. Let me show you. And you can see the airline is offset here. So when you put that hard airline in, it's just gonna go straight down. Now, Aquarium Co-op suggests getting a piece of flexible airline tubing, putting it between here and this tube so that you can bend this thing down. If you don't have the specific softer airline like they do, which my big roll of airline tubing is not, it's a slightly more stiff airline, trying to do that is a nightmare and it makes that suck. So let's say you don't do the airline, you do this straight in, what's the problem with that? Because of how the blender's designed, we have these corners. And if you don't have the most amazing fresh brine shrimp eggs in the world, which the brine shrimp I use comes from Brine Shrimp Direct, it's their 90 plus percent hatch rate eggs. They're very good. And for the most part, with the exception of a small pouch that I keep, I keep them completely out of my fish room. So it's not moist. It's not hot. I keep it sealed. The rest of them I keep in my freezer or in a tin that hasn't been opened yet. It's the only ways that I store them. If it's a completely unopened tin, it's in a cool area away from sun, nice and safe. Or if it's opened, the remainder of it sits in my freezer. If the eggs aren't perfectly fresh, and I think this is a poor design in that spec, you're gonna have eggs down here. Any eggs that don't float will get stuck in little patches down here along the sides where there's less airflow. And that is not fun. And I wanna be clear, I'm not using one of those USB air pumps that Aquarium Co-op tends to show. I'm using a full Whisper 40, which there were a ton of them on sale dirt cheap on Amazon. I bought like five of them months ago when I had mentioned it, and it cost me like $3 for one of those air pumps. It's more than enough to push a lot of air to this thing, and it does push a great amount of air, which is nice considering I paid $3 and some change for it. But even then, I'll get eggs in here all the time. And unless I go through and mess with it, that also means that there's gonna be a bunch of eggs down here that haven't perfectly floated when I go to drain this thing. Now you could say, well, you should be using the aquarium co-op eggs. Why am I gonna buy brand new brine shrimp eggs when I already have a stockpile? And I think anybody who hatches a regular amount of brine shrimp probably has a small stockpile lying around and they're gonna to wanna to go through that before they go and invest in a completely different egg from a different vendor. It's just common sense. I think that that's the biggest downfall to this design where anything that is rounded, it's not gonna get caught in these corners. This like square making it look like a blender blender is part of the problem. But otherwise, this thing's really good. Just plain and simple. Let's go through the pros. Like that's really the only con. I mean, the pro like it's, it's well kept. You get everything kind of in one place. The only thing that really sucks is you can get some stuff stuck in here if you have meh eggs or old, slightly older eggs. And that little holder, you have to take the brine shrimp hatchery off of it or build your own DIY solution in order to simply drain it and all that. But other than that, if you just get your airline on this thing and get it going, it holds two liters of water, which is really, really simple for dosing your salt. 
especially if you're in really soft water like Seattle, where it's literally just one liter, one tablespoon of a good reef salt, you're done. Put your brine shrimp eggs. Easy. That's the nice part about this thing. It, it All the measurements are right. In, in liters, one liter or two liter, it, it's literally like you, you fill it up to just slightly below this lip. You throw your salt in. You don't even have to dechlorinate your tap water if you have a low chlorine content like the Seattle area. Now, if you have a really high chlorine or chloramine, you might want to put a little dechlorinator in. But it helps get the, the brine shrimp out of their eggs. It's really fast, really simple. There's a reason why this thing isn't like immaculately clean because it's literally every time I drain it out, I give it a quick rinse, I refill it with water, I put salt in it, and I get it going again. Uh, I'm temporarily not using it only because I wanted to shoot this video. Why did I switch to this thing or why did I test this thing other than um, I wanted to needlessly spend money? <laughs> I think the big thing is this. So my previous hatcheries are all either just under one liter or were one liter. And as I start feeding more and more fish, I really just want that extra space to make sure that it's a little easier to hatch more eggs if I need to. Having two hatchers, which I bought two of the blender, makes it so I can easily rotate things if I want to, if I was in like mass production of eggs or whenever I can get a like proper fish room done. Uh, I, I basically bought them knowing what my future was as opposed to for what I needed right now. Second, if you do some of the DIY like fixes like the hanger or, or the, the PVC stuff out of the wood or whatever and you build your brine shrimp station like that, these things actually become really, really effective and really, really cool. Third, I like the actual like plastic this is built out of because it will last a lot longer than some of the other products that I've tried, especially like my round ones that I got off eBay. They have a little strainer in the bottom of them naturally, and that thing gets gunked up and it's a nightmare to clean it, which is, it slows down harvesting. It basically forces me to like, wait for everything to settle, put a turkey baster into the thing, and which if you watch my previous brine trim video, that's what I do. Whereas this, I let it settle, I pour it out of the bottom, I walk around and I feed my fish. Now, I tend to use a pipette because I'm doing small doses to lots of little tanks. And then what I'll do is, whether or not you think this is smart, I will just pour straight out of the tap to a bunch of my big tanks. And for the most part, I'll get, I'll use a container to get all the eggs that are at the bottom out. So if you have that problem, this is what I suggest doing. Then you'll let that kind of settle and you'll use the pipette out of there and you'll go around to your big tanks and your bigger fish like I do the Guppy Mansion and a bunch of my bigger adult rainbow tanks by just pouring straight out of the blender. I don't really care about the salt content or the small amount of ammonia that's in there. The filtration on all these tanks and the water volume of all these tanks won't care. Between the water change schedule and the amount of water going through the filtration, the amount of water in the system, it's so little, even if I fed every single day, it's basically impossible to impact the water system and the water parameters other than a very, very minuscule amount, which the rest of the tank's balance will take care of. What matters is that live food is incredible for fish. Finally, let's talk about why the long-term matters. A lot of the other solutions I look at, like pop bottles and stuff like that, they only last so long before they kind of start degrading, they get fragile, you accidentally break them, whatever. They're not designed for a long-term use, where this stuff is a really nice, durable plastic, and it will last a long time. So while this is, I think, a little more expensive than it really should be, if you consider how long this should last you, it becomes worth it. In the end, do I think that this is the perfect solution for a brine shrimp hatchery? No. Do I think this is the best commercially made, easy to use, user-friendly brine shrimp hatchery out there? Yes. And that might be worth the price. The fact that it is the easiest to use. It's the best quality of the kind of made available to the hobbyist where you're not going like true commercial level. A little expensive, but the quality is enough to where it probably in the end is worth it for you if you're hatching enough brine to need this much volume or more. If you need to run like two or three hatcheries worth, 
yeah, they're expensive, but these are great. And that's the nice part. They're great. You don't need to use the air stone that comes with. I run my air into this thing at full blast. There's no reason to dial it down. The brine shrimp don't care. <laughs> it just turns over the water better. The only thing that I would say you need to caution yourself on is just making sure that it gets... It doesn't run too long. You're going to have to figure out between the temperature you're keeping and, and the uh, volume of like brine shrimp or whatever or the type of eggs you're using. You're just going to have to figure out whether it's 24 hours or 36 hours. But you go much longer than that and you risk like everything dying off from the amount of the small amounts of ammonia that's building up from the waste that's in there because the brine shrimp are a little fragile. But beyond that, it's a pretty good product. What I would love to know is for how many of you that have this thing, what are your thoughts? Do you think it was worth the purchase? Do you regret buying it? Is there other flaws about this thing that I haven't covered that you think, like, how could I not possibly have mentioned this? Uh, I think, you know, the big ones are probably that that stupid holder and the fact that you're, the hard airline tubing isn't perfect because of the, where the air is set. I think you could have made it a little, bit, <laughs> a little, a little better, but overall, it's a pretty well-designed product. If you enjoy little reviews like this and the fact that um, I, I will say the cons on this thing happily and freely, <laughs> hit the like button, maybe even share this. It really helps with those magical YouTube algorithms, especially if you've done a comment already. If you have, thank you so much. You're the best. For those of you who uh, think that somehow in me saying there's a lot of negatives with this and I think it's too expensive that I'm a shill for Corey, you can hit thumbs down twice. I... I I guess. <laughs> For those of you who are new to this channel, or maybe you've just been casually watching and do a lot of product reviews and do a lot of training stuff, pretty soon we're going to have a really phenomenal, like, full user guide when it comes to light, especially with the Fluval lights. Uh, it'll be like the end-all, be-all ultimate guide to the Fluval light that is coming relatively soon. All sorts of other cool stuff is coming. I've got some new fish we're going to talk about soon. A couple other product reviews that are coming up. Consider subscribing. Maybe you ring that little notification bell. That way you don't miss anything when it comes to this channel and the content I produce. There's always a live stream every Tuesday. Join in, have some fun, get some questions answered. I really enjoy interacting with chat, so I hope to see you there. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.